All right. So uh, we are at bab 8B hutang lapuk, hutang lapuk terpulih dan peruntukan hutang ragu. All right. So uh, in last class we done one question two, question three, yeah, up until question three. Okay, so we will continue to do question four today. So take out your notebook, question four. Right, I guess ready for the class. If yes, type a R in the chat box. Okay, nice. All right, so question four. Petikan imbangan duga kedai Siti adalah seperti berikut. So, imbangan duga, so you ada hutang lapo A, B, T, peruntukan hutang ragu here, 70. Okay, Siti telah menyelaraskan PHR, peruntukan hutang ragu, dengan kadar 4% atas ABT bersih pada akhir tempoh perekanan. Hitung peruntukan hutang ragu dan menyediakan akaun-akaun yang berkaitan. So first, kita perlu hitungkan PHR. After that, we will have to do uh, menyediakan akaun-akaun yang berkaitan. Okay, so how do we calculate the peruntukan peruntukan hutang ragu so we have to use okay even though you see a hutang lapok here all right tapi one thing you have to know is in your imbangan duga if you see a hutang lapok and a abt maksudnya the ABT, this amount, 2,300, is after you minus your hutang lapok. In other words, hutang uh, ABT ini adalah ABT yang sudah bersih. What is ABT bersih? ABT bersih, in your formula, is using your ABT minus your hutang lapok. Okay, then you get your ABT bersih. But what I'm saying here is that when you see hutang lapo and ABT in your imbangan duga, then this 2,300, the figure, the amount for your ABT is the amount after you tolak your hutang lapo. Therefore, we don't have to minus 400 again because it's already minus. All right? So what you're going to do now is you use a PHR formula, the hutang uh the account balloon terima times the percentage given which is four percent then you get how much two thousand three hundred times four percent you get ninety two so ninety two is your PHR for untukan Hutang ragu, the new one. Okay, so how do we record dalam account? So, buka your bentuk T. So, let's start with account peruntukan hutang ragu. Okay, so here we do Malaysia, we do Malaysia. So uh, 2021, 2021. Okay, so 
please take note that this PHR is considered a new PHR, meaning the peruntukan hutang ragu for this year. And this, what you see here, can you see the PHR here? Okay, a can number the PHR seventy ringgit. What is this then? This is actually your PHR for last year, or we can say this is actually a baki awa. The old PHR. That's why I say I say a new PHR. So, in the PHR we got a baki awa. So January one. So the baki awa, baki bibi lah, right? Okay. So how much is that? Seventy ringgit. So we put here. Right. And PHR know that it is on the credit side, the baki. Okay. So after that, skip, and then you put the one line, double line, and then we got uh baki HB, right? Baki HB. So. The baki HB will be our new peruntukan hutang ragu. So meaning this 92 will be our baki akhir, the new one. So when there is a HB, there must be a baki BB. Ninety-two. So from here, what you see is the 92 will come down because 92 is bigger. And then 92 is here. So there is an empty space here. So I have to minus all right. I have to use my 92 dollar, your 70 ringgit. I'll get 22. So what is this 22 actually? So this 22, if you remember what we done in question three and this thing, and this one. So from here, supposedly, it is 70. Okay. And then from 70, jump to this year. This is how much? 92. We calculated it's 92. So what is this? Is this a pertambahan atau pengurangan? So from 70 to 92, definitely it is a pertambahan. Peruntukan hutang. Ragu. All right. Yes. Pertambahan peruntukan hutang ragu. So, you just use 92 minus 70 and you get 22, which is this figure. It's the same thing. Alright? So, then you get your pertambahan peruntukan. So, this is on uh, December 31st. This is also December 31st. Huh? Alright? So, when there is a pertambahan peruntukan hutang ragu, meaning I have to buka also, alright? Tambahan untuk kamu tanggung tambahan untuk kamu tanggung. So here I already credit my PHR, so I have to debit my pertambahan here. So on December thirty first, peruntukan hutang ragu twenty two. So here twenty two. Okay. So if there is a twenty two now, what we gonna do next is close it. Because the pertambahan is like a account sementara, so we close it. Double lining. So what is this? This we will send to account 
untung rugi rumah. I told you a pertambahan THR. How do you feel? You feel bad because more money you cannot collect. Okay, so a pertambahan is actually a belanja. That's why you have to send to account untung rugi. So you mention account untung rugi, you buka satu account untung rugi lah. So, akau untung rugi. So, here I credit my pertambahan. So, in akau untung rugi, I will have to debit. So, um, here you write pertambahan per untung kan hutang ragu how much is that 22 that's it this is how you do the account account for this phr so you have to determine lah, is it a pertambahan so on this side it will be called pertambahan phr if it is on this side here you will call a pengurangan because here you will reduce your baki handa ke bawah Like Alright, so this will be your question for the answer. Alright, so now we look at question five. So question five, particularly mengen duga blah blah blah. Then there is maklumat tambahan. Then anda digandaki menyediakan catatan pelarasan ke dalam jenah am. We have to do jenah am. Lepas tu we have to do this three account. And last you have to do a catatan dalam penyata kewangan. Penyata kewangan meaning there is an account untung rugi and also PKK. All right. So, question five. Five A. So, catatan pelasan ke dalam jurnal arm means we have to do a jurnal arm. Jurnal arm tarik butiran debit Okay. Alright, so this is jenah am. Alright, so now look at maklumat tambahan. Okay, hutang foreign ringgit daripada seorang pelanggan Jack dihapuskan sebagai hutang lapoan. Can you see it now? So, even though there is a hutang lapo here, okay, 800, but I already told you whenever you see ABT and hutang lapo here, meaning this ABT is the, the 4,000 is already tolak the hutang lapo 800. Okay, it's already divide. So that's two. But then if you talk about the maklumat tambahan punya hutang lapo is not uh, calculated yet. Maksudnya sekarang I have to minus this 4,000 from the 400. Because this is maklumat tambahan lah. Maksud before this, kita belum record for this maklumat tambahan. That's why sekarang we have to do the pelarasan. And pelarasan is shown in the maklumat tambahan. Alright, so first thing, how do we do the journal arm for this? So the journal arm for this, uh, by the way, this is 2021. All this happening on 31st July, right? July 31st. Okay. So what we're going to do is, you remember who, this is a hutang lapo. Ah? So you, a hutang lapo is a belanja. Correct or not? So if it is a belanja based on our abalim, belanja we have to debit. So what account do we credit? So this one is always uh hutan lapo is always linked to our pelanggan pelanggan. In other words, means ABT. Alright, so I have to credit my account below the river. So hutan lapo four hundred. 
So here you can see my record gun hutang lapo. Record gun hutang lapo. All right. So that's why here my 4,000, I have to minus 400. Why? Later you know why. Okay. Question two. I mean number two. Alibaba Enterprise menerima sekeping check 600 ringgit daripada Masahuddin. Seorang pelanggan yang hutangnya telah dihapuskan sebagai hutang laput 3 tahun dahulu. Just remember this one. Meaning, after you sudah record sebagai hutang laput, then 3 years later, pelanggan ini come back to us and pay us a check. 600 ringgit. So that is a hutang lapo terpule. Okay, so how do you record for this? So first thing, what do we debit and what do we credit? So when you see menerima check, check means bank. Meaning money comes in. When money comes in, in means what? Debit. So I have to debit my bank. So after you debit your bank, you have to credit what? You have to credit the hutang lapo terpulih. And we all know that a hutang lapo terpulih is a hasil. Why? Because when you menerima wang, how do you feel? You feel happy, happy, hasil. Hasil is also for happy. Correct or not? So that's why hasil is on the credit side. Therefore, we credit the hutang lapo terpulih. So how much? It is uh, 600, right? So you put 600. So here you say, merekodkan hutang lapo terpulih. Done. So this is your general arm. So always when they ask you to do a catatan pelarasan ke dalam jenat arm, we just based on the maklumat tambahan. What they give us, then we just put it in. All right? So next, we have to do the account account. So we have to do three account here. The uh, account belum terima. Okay, so account belum terima. Account hutang lapo. And account hutang lapo terpulih. So, ABT is um, ABT is a debit side, it's an asset, ma, right? Therefore, this 2021, on July 31st, kita ada baki BB 4,000 ringgit. Then we also got hutang lapo 800, 800, right? So, you put here. Baki bibi lah. Okay. Yeah, 100 ringgit. Okay, we just copy this figure, 4,800 into the ledger. Okay, after that, then we have to do our pelarasan lah. Right, so, number one, ialah hutang lapok lah, right. Okay, dihapuskan sebagai hutang lapok. So, when you have a hutang lapok, what do we do? We have to debit hutang lapok and credit ABT. So, first, we debit hutang lapok dulu. So here, 
What do we write? The account volume terima. Okay. How much yang dihapus? Empat ratus. Okay, four hundred ringgit. So I debit my hutang lapor, and I have to credit my ABT. Okay, twenty twenty one. So hutang lapo four hundred ringgit. Okay, so debit, credit, done. That is the four. The first one. The second one, the hutang lapo terpule. Okay, so whenever you have a hutang lapo terpule, I have to credit my hutang lapo terpule. So here, when I credit my hutang lapo terpule. I have to what? Actually, I have to debit my bank. But then here, do we have to do account bank? The answer is no, isn't it? But if you want to do an account bank, let's say you're not sure, you just want to do an account bank. So how does it show, right? So it will show here, isn't it? So when I menerima one, I have to debit my account bank because money comes in. So here, daripada mana? Daripada hutang lapuk terpulih. Berapa? Uh, 600 ringgit. Okay, so if you debit your account bank, I have to credit my hutang lapota pulley here at right bank and it is 600 ringgit. Can you guys follow? If yes, type a yes in the chat box. If you can follow, type yes, Y-E-S, yes. Okay, good. All right. So now, after everything, we cannot leave it like that because this is a pelarasan. So we will have to send to the penyata kewangan. So here, we tutup everything. So which size is bigger? 4,000, all right. Okay, so 2,000. So this one, 4,000 minus 400, you get 3,600. So this figure, because this is an asset, all right? If it is an asset, then we do a Baki HPBB. Then Baki BB, 3,600, same. Because this is an asset, all right? So after July 31st will be, August Satula, the next day. Okay, so for hutang lapo, hutang lapo is a belanja. Belanja go to where? Go to the account untung rugi. Therefore, what we're gonna do here is to do jumlah kan thousand two hundred, thousand two hundred. So here will be thousand two hundred also lah. Okay, so to account untung rugi. So here you will write account untung Rugi. 2021. July 31st. Is it? So, hutang is a hasil. Hasil. Because in account untung rugi, what do we record? We record belanja dan hasil. Therefore, all the belanja, all the hasil will send to the account untung rugi. So, same goes for this one. Um, untung rugi July 31st That's it so this one is to account untung rugi and then this account bank you just put it like that lah. because this one I just show you why is it credit here because if you have to do account bank it is actually on the debit side alright but then this is not required by the question Okay, only this trade account we have to do based on the question. All right. So let me clean this up a bit. Okay, so from here, this is done already. So what about C? So C, we have to do the penyata kewangan. So the penyata kewangan includes untung rugi and PKK. So I'll have to do account on rugi. Okay. 
only a few things. Also, uh, PKK. Should I call one ton Rudy Bagita Hunter after thirty first July twenty twenty one? So this one is your penyata kedudukan kewangan pada thirty first July twenty twenty one. This is like your penyata kewangan lah, right? So AUR accounting rugi and PKK. So how do you record here? So very simple. Which one did we record for the accounting rugi tadi? Inilah right. This one and this one. These two. So we need hutang lapor. We have to put into accounting rugi. And hutang lapor is a belanja. So here I already credit my hutang lapor. Can you see now? I an account rugi is on the credit side of your hutang lapo. Therefore, when we come to untung rugi, we have to debit it. And here we write hutang lapo. How much is that? Thousand two hundred. Yeah, see. Okay. Then for hutang lapo terpule is a hasil, and so we really debit. The hutang lapor terpulih. Ini sebenarnya, the untung rugi is in the debit side of your hutang lapor terpulih. So, in my untung rugi, I have to credit it. So, here hutang lapor terpulih is 600. So, this is how you record for your account. Don't rugi. So, we've done this one and this one. So, lastly will be your account volume terima. So how much do we record for our account volume terima in our PKK? So and ABT is an asset, therefore it's on the debit side. Lah, right? Asset semasa. Okay. And you can see that this Baki BB is where? It's on the debit side. Can you see now? The Baki BB is on the debit side. So therefore, if you want to record for ABT, it must be in the debit side also. So here, account, balloon, terima, and then you take the Baki BB figure, which is 3,600. Why is it 3,600? Because the ABT is actually using the 4,000, all right, minus, can you say not? The 4,000 here, minus the hutang lapok dalam pelarasan, which is, the 400. So you minus 400 and then you get 3,600. So this is how you get this figure. And you see that this 800, we don't have to minus already because the 800 has already been deducted from the 4,000, from the ABT. All right. Therefore, we don't have to minus again. All right. So that's why we just record this 3,600 for your PKK. That's it. So this one, I'll just highlight it up so that you know this is not required, but just to show you. So here is the answer. All right, are you guys okay with question five? If yes, type five in the chat box, please. Right, so you can see that all the charu, all the way that we use to record for this all the pelarasan is almost similar. Okay, when we were doing for the account nominal, you remember, or the balloon terima, balloon bayar, we're using the same way to record also. Okay, if it is a, a belanja, then you debit. If it is a hasil, you credit. Asset, you debit. If it is a liability, then you credit. All right, so... That is for your question five. Now, quickly, let's move to question six. Okay. Demo berkenan penyegaan hikmah berakhir pada 30 Jun setiap tahun. Bagi akaun belum terima adalah seperti very good. So, on 30 Jun 2018, the ABT is 38,000. 
And then for 2019, the ABT, I mean the Baki Akhil, is 35,000. So, uh, Perniagaan Hikmah memperuntukkan 4% PHR, so 4% setiap tempoh perekonan. So, menghitung PHR bagi tahun 2018 dan 2019. Here we have to calculate the PHR for 2018 and also 2019. All right. So here, question six. Hey. So PHR for 2018. Let's do for the 2018 first. So how do we calculate? So you use the ABT 38,000. Times how many percent? 4%. So how much you get for the PHR for 2018? 38,000 times 4%. You get 1,520. So that is your PHR for 2018. Okay. Then what about the PHR for 2019? Okay, so same thing. Just use... 35,000 times 4%. Okay, then how much we get? 35,000 times 4%, you get 1,400. So from here, we can see that what happened from 2018, 1,520, and 2019 is 1,000. 400. So from 2018 to 2019, this is a what? It is a drop. It is a perkurangan. Therefore, what happens? There is a pengurangan PHR. And when there is a pengurangan PHR, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Of course, it is a good thing, a happy thing. Therefore, it is a hasil. Okay, pertambahan is a belanja. Pengurangan pesha is a hasil. Alright, so here, and we already done for A, sudah hitung lah, right? So, 2018, 2019, minus PHR. Now, we go to B. You have to menyediakan account peruntukan hutang ragu bagi tahun ke dua tahun. Okay, so, let's do an account. Peruntukan hutang ragu. Okay, account peruntukan hutang ragu. Get the leisure. Okay, so please focus for this question. By the way, this is B. Okay, so, so let's start. Dia cakap kedua-dua tahun lah, meaning for 2018 and 2019. Alright, so let's start from 2018 first. 2018. Yeah. First thing first, you have to ask yourself a question. For 2018, is it a new first time, okay? Is it new first time to do PHR? Okay, if, how do I put it? Okay, first, I put it here. First time PHR. First time bought PHR. Yes or no? Which one? Okay, if it is a first time, yes, meaning we have to put in two places, right? The first place will be the hutang ragu. Okay, you have to debit hutang ragu. And then you have to credit 
yo uh, peruntukan hutang orang tua yo PHR. Yeah, that's already in your note. If first time, then you have to debit P, uh, hutang orang tua credit PHR. But then if it is not the first time, meaning the second time or the third time or the fourth time already. Okay, meaning it's not the first time. If it is a no, then you have to see, is it a pengurangan atau a pertambahan? Or not? So if pengurangan, then you have to debit the PHR, credit the pengurangan PHR. But then if it is a pertambahan, then I will be debiting the pertambahan PHR and then credit the PHR. You see, so now come back to this question, question six. Is it the first time for 2018? The answer is yes, because they didn't give us any PHR for 2017. You see, not? so we just started to use from 2018. That's why we get the figure for 2018 is 1,520. So if this is the first time, meaning, yes, it's the first time. So I have to debit utang ragu and credit PHR. Alright, so in the PHR here, I will have to credit lah because I debit utang ragu masuk here. I will credit. June, sorry. June 30th. So here, you write hutang ragu. Is it? So how much is that? It is 1,520. This is the first time, so everything 1,520. Put it in. Okay, so that's all for 2018. That's all. So you just key HP. 1520. That's this one, this one. So when there's a HB, there is a PB. One, five, two, zero. Okay, so then from here, okay, then we go to 30th June 2019. So here 2019. Okay, so maybe here I put 2019. So. Okay, so but so after here are done already uh, so after the double line here is a second year already the second tempo so 1520 so now we really calculated the phr for 2019 which is 1400 so be here and double line so this is the phr so the baki bb at the end must be here also on the credit side or not so which is 1,400. So when there is a Baki BB, there must be a HB. So you put it up here. Oops. Okay, Baki HP, 1,400. Okay, so from here, what can you see? You can see that, so I bring down, right? So here is smaller, 1,400. Here is 1,520. So you put here, 1,520. Here is 1,520. So this figure, you use 1,520 minus 1,400, 120. This one. What is that? We just we just found this now. This is a drop, right? From 2018 to 2019, this is a pengurangan. Therefore, here, we call it a pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. Okay. 
120. Is it? So why is it a pengurangan here? Because now, after the first year, after 2018, this is the second year already, ma. So this is no longer the first time. No. So after that, we have to find out is it a pengurangan PHR atau pertambahan? How to see? Very simple lah. You just compare lah. Last year and this year punya PHR. Which one is higher? So if this year it becomes higher, maksudnya there is a pertambahan. If this year it becomes lower, then there is a pengurangan PHR. So how do you get this? You use the jumla, tolak the 1400. So you get the 120. So this is how you get for your uh, answer. Lah. Okay, so here you can put July. So June 30th. Yep. So then this one will be something like uh, 2019 July. Okay. Are you guys clear? So this is just like that. So there is a 2018 and 2019 winner. So could do the tahun. If you guys are clear, give me a C in the chat box, please. Okay. Cool. All right. So last one, last one. Question seven. Not last of the day, uh, last for bug 8B. So you can see that this question is a combination of everything. The account hutang lapo, hutang lapo. Do you have hutang lapo to put here? Uh, not sure. Okay, but then you, you can see a hutang lapo and also a peruntukan hutang ragu. All right. So here you have the menyediakan ABT menghitung, sorry, hitung, ABT bersih, hitung, PHR, Lepas tu buat sedia jenis am, sedia akaun dalam lapor dan akaun PHR and menyediakan akaun dalam penyata kewangan. Penyata kewangan means the akaun untung rugi and penyata kedudukan kewangan. Okay, come let's go. Um, so, question 7. A. Start from A first. So, A, you have to... Wait, uh, so, 7A, you have to menghitung ABT bersih. So, how do we hitung ADP, ABT bersih? Okay, before that, let's start from one first. Yang aku telah meninggal dunia. Okay, dan baki hutangnya sebanyak 400 ringgit dihapuskan. So, and now you see dihapuskan, you know that this is a hutang lapuk. Alright, so that's 400 hutang lapuk. And then, number two is PHR 5% atas ABT. Okay, so now A. How much is the account? Belum terima bersih. So, we use the ABT, tolak the hutang lapor lah, right? So, ABT, how much is it? We can see from the imbangan juga is 13,200. Okay, so from this 13,200, how much do you have to minus? I told you, Whenever you say hutang lapo in your imbangan duga, just ignore it. We don't have to minus or plus, okay? We just don't care, okay? What we care is the amount in the maklumat tambahan. So in your maklumat tambahan, if you see a hutang lapo, then uh, this one we have to record. So how much is it? It is 400 ringgit. So you tolak 400 ringgit. So how much is that? So 13,200 minus 400, you will get... 12,800. So that is your ABT bursae for December 31st, 2020. Okay. So now next will be your B. How do we do for question B? So the B is your per un tukan, per un tukan hutang ragu. So meaning we have to find this year's. Even though you see a peruntukan hutang ragu here, I told you this is from last year bunya. Okay, it's not for 2020, it's for 2019. That's why they give us a 5%. Why? Because they want us 
to calculate this year's PHR. All right, so how do you calculate that? So you use your ABT birthday. How much is the ABT birthday now? It's no longer 13,200. How much is that now? It is 12,800, the latest one. Because after you minus your 400 of Putang Lapo. So here, you put 12,800. Okay, if you want to know how we get this figure, I don't mind to show you again, 13,200 minus 400. Okay, and then you times the lima percent, not 4% here, it's 5% here. So 13,200 minus 400, you get back this figure, 12,800. So it's actually the same thing. I just copy and paste into here. Then you have to times the extra 5%. So 12,800 times 5%, you get 640 ringgit Malaysia. Right? So this 7,600 is when? Last year, when you're, so maybe I'll put 2019. And this year, 2020 is how much? We just calculated 640. So very obvious, we know that this is a drop. This is a berkurangan. Therefore, this is a pengurangan PHR. Right, so we already know. Then we can proceed and do C, D, E. C. So C is to do the general arm lah, the, for the polarisation. So very simple, lah, isn't it? Ready, learn. It's almost the same thing from the top. This one. So you put the journal arm. Put in the tare, butiran, debit, credit. Lepas to you draw the box. Then for the tare, then put the year, ringgit Malaysia. Then what is the date? December 31st. Okay, make sure all this information is in the uh, journal app. All right, all this uh, format. Okay, so after that, go back to Manu Mutama. So this uh, Chatham Pelarasan journal app, as always, whenever there's a Pelarasan, we have to record. So like one and two, we have to record in the journal app. Right, so the first one will be the Hutang Lapo. All right, the hutang lapok. So a hutang lapok is a belanja belanja. You have to debit it. Therefore, we debit the hutang lapok. You see, all this is very straightforward. Uh, four hundred ringgit. And then when I debit the hutang lapok, where do I take it out from? I actually take it out from my ABT. That's why I, you see, I minus out right. So here I have to credit from my. Account belum terima. 400 ringgit. So here you can say what we're doing here. We are actually merekodkan hutang lapor. Quick and simple. Okay. Then the next one will be the, the second one. The peruntukan hutang ragu ialah 5% atas baki hutang. Uh, sorry, baki account volume three months. So therefore, we already calculated the interest here. So, but then how do we record for this? So we know that this 640 is a pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. So a pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu is a good thing or a bad thing. I told you, whenever we say pengurangan is a happy thing because the, the PHR drops. So when a PHR drops, we are very happy because meaning we can kutip lebih banyak hutang. We can collect more money from the hutang. So, a pengurangan PHR is a hasil and based on your abalim, you see that the hasil, the H is on the credit side. Therefore, we have to credit the pengurangan per untuk Gun, hutang, ragu. Is it? Pengurangan, peruntukan, hutang, ragu. And what is the account that we have to debit? I told you, whenever you see, you see a pengurangan PHR, whatever PHR, you definitely 
have to debit or credit the PHR for untukang hutang ragu. They are always linked together. Just like this one. You see this thing that I draw for you? Whether it's a hutang ragu atau a pengurangan atau a pendambah, uh, pendambahan, okay? The next one, the next thing that you do is the PHR. 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 So let's say debit hutang ragu, you must credit PHR. If you credit pengurangan PHR, you, debit, you definitely have to debit PHR again. If it is a pertambahan, you debit pertambahan PHR, I have to credit PHR also. That's why here. You credit your pengurangan PHR, you debit your PHR. So here, what is this? You merekodkan a pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. So how much is that? You cannot share away right 640 or, or 760. Yeah, you have to minus and then you get the difference, the perbezaan, then you put into here. Because you want to know berapa nya yang telah berkurang. So you use 640 or 760 minus 640, you get 120. See, so how I get it is actually using the 760 minus 640. So you get 120. So this is your journal arm. All right. Then we go to donkey D. D, you just have to do the account. Very simple. So if you can get all these Thing, the previous question definitely you know how to do for this question now okay so account hutang lapo Twenty 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 twenty. So for this hutang lapo right, there is a baki here ma five hundred. So there is a five hundred here. Baki BB. Okay, and then uh, let's look on the account also for the for untukang hutang ragu. Account for untukang hutang ragu. So this one, there is a baki 760. Can you see it on the credit side? So you put on the credit side here. Okay, so for your hutang lapo 500, go back to malamat tambahan satu, there's a hutang lapo, so that's why in the general arm, I debit hutang lapo, so here you debit lah, okay? So from where? From your account belum terima. But then we don't have to do account belum terima here. If you want to, then I'll have to credit my ABT. ABT, then you credit, but we don't have to do that, all right? Then the next thing will be your PHR. So when the PHR, I already got my new PHR, which is 640. If you want to do it another way, we can do it from the pengurangan side. You see it here, I debit my PHR, meaning here I have to debit it. All right. So debit here, I write pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu. How much is that? 120 ringgit. So 120. Okay, so after that, skip a line, one line, double line, jumlah. So which side is bigger? 760. So 760, here's 760 also. So here you use 760 minus 120. 
20, you get 640. So this one, baki, HP. So when there's a HB, there must be a BB. 640. This is 2021, 20, January 1. So can you see or not? This 640, the Bakya Hill, is the exact PHR that we calculated, 640. Is it? So you can either get the pengurangan and then you debit here, like what you show in the journal arm, or you do another way will be, you straight away put in the Baki BB and HB figure, and then you 760 put here, then you use 760 minus 640, you get 120 also. So it's the same thing. It just depends on how you want to do the question. All right. And then for this hutan lapo, because it is a belanger, then I will have to send it to where? To the account untung rugi. 900 here. Account untung rugi. Right. So lastly is the E, the penyata kewangan. So for your penyata kewangan, you have to do a count tunggu gi. Um, untung rugi bagi tahun berakhir 31st December 2020. This is a penyata kedudukan kewangan pada 31st December. 2020. Okay. So, for accountant rugi, what are the things that we have to record here? Of course, hutan lapo. Hutan lapo is a belanja. So, here, hutan lapo. How much? We don't take just 500. Huh? Remember the 500 and the, the new 400 that we just added. So the total is 900. So your hutan lapo is 900 now. That's it. So this one is actually using the Baki 500 at your new 500 of uh, hutan lapo. That's why you get a 900 here. Okay. And then another thing is your pengurangan PHR. To your pengurangan, PHR is a hasil. Therefore, it will be show on the credit side because on the credit side of your account, it is a hasil. So here you write, pengurangan peruntukan hutang ragu, which is how much? 120, put it here. Okay. Then now we come to the PKK. The PKK, what do we record? We record for the ABT. You see the ABT? So I have to record here. So you asset so muscle. So you write your account belum terima. How much is your account belum terima? So your account belum terima is actually 13,200. Okay. Minus of the hutang lapok, which is a 400. Then we get how much? Uh, this is the figure that we calculated, the ABT per se, 12,800. So we put here 12,800. But not done yet. Why? Because we have a peruntukan hutang ragu. So when we have a peruntukan hutang ragu, we have to record in the PKA also. We have to minus out from your ABT. So from here, you put a minus. You write peruntukan hutang. Ragu. And how much is that we have to minus? 
we have to minus the latest PHR that we just calculated, 640. You don't take from here, you don't take 760, we take this year, okay? 640, so you minus 640. And all you take, you see from here, okay, your PHR. So we take the Baki BB Bunya, and then we put it here, minus, then see how much you get. So you get 12,160. So this is your answer for your ABT. This is how we record in the PKK for the Pountu Kahuna Ragu also. All right. So that's it for this question seven. All right. So I give you some time to complete it. So if you are done, then you give me a done D-O-N-E in the chat box. All right, all right, done. Okay, great. All right, so that's all for this 8B. Hutang lapok, hutang lapok terpulih dan peruntukan hutang ragu. So now, we go into 8C. Okay, before we start doing the question, okay, let's look at some Nota. All right. So 8C, we'll be talking about the susut nilai SN or susut dan susut nilai terkumpul. Normally, I will shortcut and call it SNT. So SN and SNT. Okay. And in this, for this susut nilai, there are a few ways, or not a few ways, but a few method to calculate the susut nilai. Okay. By the way, susut nilai. In English, we call it a depreciation. And then the Susunata Kumpu, we call it the accumulated depreciation. Okay, so. To calculate the susut nilai, there are one, two, three, four ways to, to calculate. Okay, and normally in a long question, these two are more popular. Okay, they will ask you to menggunakan kaeda garis lurus, or sometimes it is just say mengirakan susut nilai atas kos. Then it's actually the same thing. All right, so th then that would be the formula. Okay, so that equals to cost times kada, the percentage, times tempo massa. Okay, later we'll apply all these things and then you'll we'll know uh, how what it means. Uh, right, then the second one will be called a kaeda baki berkurangan or we call it a atas nilai. 
Okay, so this one is a bit different because you'll be using a cos minus S and T first. S and T means the susun at the kumpu, then only you times the color susun nilai. Or another formula is called a nilai buku times kada susun at the kumpu, uh, sorry, times kada susun nilai, then times the tempo massa. And please note this is why, because nilai buku equals to cos minus S and T, meaning this is the same thing. Okay, it's just like C equals to A minus B. Alright, so if here is cos is A minus B, it goes to what? It goes to C. Lah. So that's why here I give you two. It's either cos minus S and T or she will use the nilai buku if they give you. Alright, that is a penilaian semula, this one later, later. Okay. Then, when you see a susut nilai, a susut nilai is actually a belanger. And a belanger, where do you record it in? In your account, Untung Rugi. It's the same thing. And then for your susut nilai terkumpu, it is something like your PHR. Why? Because it is a catatan contra. So if it is a catatan contra, where do we go to? We go to the PKK. Just like your PHR, tadi you saw it, right? The PHR at the end, where do you go to? The PHR is actually going to the PKK. So same thing for your S and T. Your S and T is a, uh, something like a PHR, a contra. Therefore, it will go into the PKK also. All right. Then the need, susut nilai is a belanja. So into your account. All right. So now, before we start to do question one, let me quickly explain to you the concept of susut nilai. All right, or the depreciation. So you have to know that the susut nilai SN is something related with your asset bukan semasa. Okay, what are the asset bukan semasa? The Kenderaan your car la, your perabot la, your alatan pejabat la. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Meaning, all this thing, when you buy, let's say you buy a, a phone, okay? So you see that you buy a phone for 3,000 ringgit in 2018, year 2018, and then when you come to 2019, you see the the price, if you want to sell your phone, it doesn't sell at 3,000 ringgit anymore. Correct or not? Because of susut nilai. All these things, they will susut nilai. They will drop in price. They will drop in, drop in value. So from 3,000 maybe in 2019, if you want to sell it, it maybe you can only sell for 2,000 ringgit. Because you're using it already. So in 2020, drop lagi. Now, new iPhone comes up, new phone. Then maybe 1,500. And then in 2021, maybe 1,000. Can you see now? From 3,000, dia jatuh. Therefore, a susut, if you, you know BM, Malay, susut is something synonym to what? Jatuh. Jatuh dalam nilai is another word. Susut nilai. Do you guys get it? If yes, you give me a yes in the chat box. Y E S yes. All right, that's why always I like to give the example of a car. Okay, so maybe this is a this is a car, lah, right? Then, you know what car is this? Okay, so a very good example will be a uh, Mercedes Benz. Okay, so let's say in 2018, you buy the car, the cost. So when you buy the car, the cost will be called the cost of the price that you buy with the cost. Let's say is three hundred thousand. 
Okey. 300,000. Okey. So when you buy the car 300,000 ringgit, what we saw this one is like every year the price will drop. Not only Merce, but any other car, they will have to suit Nilai. Okay? So now, i give you an example. So let's say the question says, the suit, the car does suit Nilai. Car does suit Nilai is 10%. Right? Meaning, setahun. Yes, setahun. Meaning, every year, the cost, the price of this car akan jatuh 10%. 10%. 10%. So how? So, let's say, let me, let me do one example. 2018, cost 300,000, right? So, what is the nilai for 2018. So how do you calculate? If you go back to my uh, formula, now we are using the Kaeda Garis Lurus. I use number a few Kaeda, right? A few methods. So now we are talking about Garis Lurus. So how do you calculate the susut So in 2018, the susut nilai will be the 300,000, the cost times the 10%. Is it? So how much you get? You get 30,000. All right. So in your susu nilai terkumpu, you'll be 30,000. Okay, what is susu nilai terkumpu? Later you know. Okay, but what will be your nilai buku? What is nilai buku? Nilai buku means the current book value. Okay, so how do we get this figure? Nilai buku, just now you saw the formula, you use cost minus susut nilai terkumpu. Meaning you're using 300,000 minus susut nilai terkumpu, 30,000. And then your nilai buku will be 270,000. So from here, the nilai buku can show what is the current nilai. Nilai yang semasa bagi tarik ini. Okay? So if you want to sell your car, you can sell it for 270,000. You can no longer sell at 300,000 because kita sudah susut nilai 30,000. Okay. And let's continue to 2019. Then what will be a susu for the 2019? Same thing, you use the cost because you're using Gary to lose. So you use back the cost 300,000 times the 10%, same thing. It will equal to 30,000 now, same for 2019. But then for the susu you have to use 2018 punya 30,000. This one that you have plus this year's 30,000. Then your susu nilai terkumpu will be 60,000. So in conclusion, what is SNT? SNT means you add up all the susu nilai together. That become a terkumpu. You kumpu semua susu nilai together, then it is called a SNT. You get it now? So from here, what will be my nilai buku now? So you can use 300,000 minus 60,000. 200,000, the cost, minus this year's SNT, the latest SNT will be minus 60,000. How much will you get? You get 240,000. Understand? Or you can use last year punya 270,000, the nilai buku, you minus this year's Susun nilai, 30,000. You get the same figure, 240,000. So meaning, oh, at 2019, if you want to sell your car, your MERS, 
it already depreciated to 270,000. So it all depends on the percentage that you're using. All right, some people they use 20%, they use 30%. So it all depends on the question. If the question gives you 5%, you use 5%. If they give you 10%, you use 10%. All right, so let's continue. Let's say what about 2020? So it's the same thing. 300,000 times 10%, it becomes 30,000. And then with this same 30,000, you add to the S&T 60,000. So from last year 60,000 plus this year 30,000 SN, you get 90,000. And this one continue to depreciate 300,000. The cost minus all the current 2020s when you're S&T, 90,000. Then now, your Nilai Buku is just 210,000. Are you guys clear? Do you not understand the SN? If yes, you give me an SN in the chat box, please. So this is the same concept that will be applying to other asset bukan semasa. Okay, you see that all the things, your phone, your sofa, your TV, television, your major, your currency, all this with years, dia akan jatuh dalam ni, susun ni. But there's one thing, okay, that will not susun ni, but will appreciate, akan naik ni. What's the thing? Your property. Or we call it the land and building. Okay? So you know if 10 years ago, in your parents will tell you one of all these things, maybe in 2010, your parents bought a house with 500,000 ringgit. Okay? And then after 10 years, now in 2022, wow, now we can sell the house for 750,000. Eh? Is it not? So from 500,000, you naik to 750,000. This is called uh, appreciation. All right? But in SBM, we don't have to learn this thing. All right, so you can forget about it. So here you just have to know the susutnya, which is nilai yang jatuh. All right, okay. So then let's go back to the question. Okay, so now after knowing all those things, let's try to do question one. Okay. So, semua mesin telah dibeli dengan harga 48,000. So, meaning this is the cost. That's it. So, kita beli dengan the harga, then there's the cost. But the first May 2018. Now, mesin tersebut disusunyaikan dengan kada 10%. There's a 10% kada setahun atas cost. Can you say atas cost? Atas cost means, in other words, you're using kada garis lurus which is what we learned just now you just straight away times 10 percent with the cost the formula will be cost times the percentage so then they say the tempo per economy per acute by the setiap 31st december okay you have to be careful huh? when did we buy it first may 2018 and the tempo per acute by the 31st December. And then they're going to give account very good bagi tahun 2018 and 2019. Let's start with A. Come on. Okay. Account susut nilai mesin. Then uh, account susut nilai terkumpul mesin.
Okay. So account susut nilai machine. So now, how do we calculate the susut nilai? Yeah. So I think better show working to your first later you all can find. Okay. So susut nilai. This. Uh, find for the susut nilai for 2018 first. Okay, because we have to do 2018 and 2019. Ma. So let's break down and do the 2018 because kita beli pada man, bila? 1st May 2018. Okay, so the formula is what? The cost times the kada susut nilai. And then if you can see, we have to times the tempo masa. Okay, then you'll be wondering, Hey, what is this tempo master that we are talking about? Okay, so now let's read the question again. Bila kita yang beli? 1st May 2018. So 1st May 18. Sampai bila dia end? Tempo perikonan akhir pada 31st December. Maksud dia is sampai 31st December saja. And how long is one tempo perikonan? Satu tempo perikonan bermula if this end dia berakhir 31st December, maksudnya dia bermula pada 1 January 18. It must be 12 months. 12 bulan. Betul tak? Tapi when we buy, we buy here. Maksudnya, we only start using the machine from 1st of May. So that will be how many months? May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Maksud from here is just about 7 bulan. Faham dah? And can you see this 10% is for setahun? But then kita hanya guna 7 bulan saja. So, what we're going to do is we are going to apportion it. Okay, apportion means you have to go according to the date. So, now when we calculate the cost is 48,000. Is it? It cost 48,000. And how much? How many percentage? 10%. Fair enough. And then, now, this is where it comes, the tempo masa. So, berapa bulan? Tujuh bulan. Out of how many bulan dalam setahun? Twelve months. Isn't it? So, this is something, the, the tempo masa is something like what we have done in the account nominal. And remember, the pra buyer center, they say dia uh, bayar for setahun, tapi dia start, dia bermula pada April atau dia berakhir pada bila. So, this is something similar. Alright? So, you calculate lah. So, 48,000 times 10% times 7 over 12. You get how much? 2,800 for Susut Nilai 2008. Correct. 5, 6, 5, 6. Yeah, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Again, uh, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Eh, it should be 8 months, sorry. Uh, so sometimes you have to calculate properly. Lah. Okay, so don't be like me. Times 8 over 12 should be 8 months, so it should be 3,200. Okay, this is for 2018. So if you want to record, how do you record? So susut nilai machine, I told you it is a belanja. So if it's a belanja, meaning we have to debit it. So kita debit sini 2018. Eh, sorry, should be ringing here. So here 2018. So the last date will be December lah, 31st. Okay, so here, right, susut nilai 
terkumpul mesin. Okay, how much? 3,200. So here, if I debit Susun Yai machine, here I have to credit my Susun Yai Terkumpula SMT. 2018, Ringgit Malaysia. In December 31st, Susut Nilai Machine. All right. So that is for 2018. That's it. Done. Then we can close it and send it to the penyata kewangan. All right. So 2018, December 31st. This one sent to account. Because this is a belanja, you see? Belanja go to account untung rugi. Therefore, I'm sending this to untung rugi. Close it. Okay. And then for this one, the Susan Tekumpu machine, because you are going to PKK, remember, any account that is going to the PKK, we don't close it. We do the HB and BB. All right. So this one, 3,200. Put here 3,200. So here, 3,200. But then we don't send to anywhere. We put HBBB. Is it? So now, if we want to do the account to we give for 2018, okay, because we have to do 2018 and 2019, all right. So for 2018, C. Account untung rugi bagi tahun berakhir 31st December 2018. Now we are doing for 2018. Yeah? So here, you can see here, I sent to account untung rugi, right? So here, I credit my Susun Yai machine. So I have to debit my account untung rugi. Lah. And some of this is a belanja. That's why it is on the debit side. So, susut nilai machine, 3,200. Okay, and then for my D, if can you skip one more part, you skip here this much, because this one will be for 2019. Okay, now I skip and then to the D. Okay, the D will be for the PKK lah. Penyata kedudukan kewangan pada 31st December 2018. Okay. For this PKK, we I want to do it a bit different. Okay, so here what you're gonna do is you put a set bukan semasa. What's this is uh, a set bukan semasa, my right? And so. Uh, RM 
rm rm rm so the format for here will be how here will be the cost here will be the susut nilai terkumpu here will be the nilai buku and lastly here is the jumlah all right so when you go to the pkk so this is the format for the asset uh bukan semasa lah all right so here what is the asset bukan semasa here it is the machine isn't it so right the machine so the machine cost is how much Forty eight thousand. so you can underline it okay so forty eight thousand for the cost what is the system to so you take from here three thousand two hundred when you say three thousand two hundred you minus bracket minus three thousand two hundred and then the near buku you use the 48,000, just like what I showed you just now. You use your cost minus your S and T. Then you get your nilai buku. So you minus the 3,200, you will get 44,800. So this 44,800 is your nilai buku for machine at 31st December 2018. Are you guys clear? If yes, Type C in the chat box. We are clear. Okay, very good. All right, last, last, last. Okay, let's finish at 2019, then I'll let you guys go. Okay, quick one. So you just fill up only. So SN for 2019. So same thing, we're using the same formula, the cost. So the cost is what? How much? 48,000 because we are using upper Gary's low risk, right? So 48,000 times the 10%. But this time, do we still have to apportion it? Do we have to times the tempo master like 8 over 12 like that? No. Why? Because after 2018, from 2019, we're starting from 1st January 2019, we're using it sampai 31st December 2019, isn't it? So from 1st January till 31st December is how long? It's one year already. So one year means you either times satu, there's one year, or one year is over 12 over 12, is also one, or you don't want to write also can, because it's the same thing. So then your susu nila will be 4,800. Can you see it? Okay, so this will be the susu nila for 20. 19. So how do you re how do you record? Same thing. When you have susu nilai, you debit your susu nilai for 2019. So December 31st. And then where do we send to? So susu nilai terkumpul machine. So this year, 2019 will be 4,800. So when I debit susu nilai machine, I will have to credit my S&T. So in 2019 here, I already put out the Baki BB. So now I just put... December 31st, that this I saw debit. So now I have to credit here and put susut nilai machine 4,800. That's it. So after that, just close it up. Same thing. Okay. So this one I close and send to the accounting rugi. December 31st, 2019. Uh, 4,800. So here, if I send to account rugi, here I credit as N machine, then later I have to debit my account rugi for 2019 year. Okay? Then for your SNT machine, I just close up. Because this one is to PKK, so I do what? HB and BB. Alright? So here you jumla 8,000. Here 8,000. This one will be 8,000 lah. Is it so? You can see that the susut nilai tegubu machine is add up all the susut nilai from last year, this year, and then if next year, then we add up everything. So we keep up to the latest jumla of S and T of the machine. So here we put Baki HB. So um, December thirty first, twenty nineteen. So when there's a HB, you should we do the BB lah. Okay. January 1, 
that T to be 8,000. Okay, so that's all for A and B. So now your accounting rigid. So we are now doing for the 2019 video. Okay, so accounting rugi, blah, 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 down, bra, 31st December 2019. So same thing, if you look at the 2019 accounting rugi here, I credit my Susut Nyai machine. So if I credit, I have to debit Susut Nyai machine here, then the figure now will be 4,800. Is it? That's it. And then for your PKK, just copy and paste that, right? Okay. Then you change this PKK to part of 31st December 2019. So now then you put in all the Ringgit Malaysia, SM Bukan Semasa, cost, SNT, Nila Buku Jumlah. Jumlah, we use it when we have, we are doing the long question where you have other like uh, Perabot, Alatan Pujabat. Then only at the end you Jumlah and put here. But for now it's just one. So we just use this three column first. So the cost will be 48,000 same. I told you the cost is always the same. That's the price that we bought with, all right, 48,000. But the SNT will be different. So for this year, how much is the SNT? The SNT, you look at your Bucky BV or the HP here for 2019, 8,000. So you minus 8,000. Then your Nilai Buku will be 40,000 for 2019. So this is how you record for your susut nilai. Dalam the accounting rugi and your PKK. This is very important because later when you do all the combined question, when you're doing your record dalam kap, when you're doing uh, account perdagangan, accounting rugi dan penyata kedua keuangan, we need to know how to record all this susut nilai and where to put it in your penyata keuangan. Are you guys okay? Clear? If yes, Give me a one in the chat box. You guys following so far. All right. So you guys done? If those of you that are done, type done D-O-N-E in the chat box. You are done. Done, then type done. You see everyone type done, huh? Or else cannot go first. Until everyone is done. And then, sure. All right. So I will give you homework. Then you can go. All right. So thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So you do the homework. Must do ah. Very important. So page. One nine four, you do question ten. Page one nine four question ten is uh the account nominal question, those prabaya belum bayar and so on. Okay, then you go to page one nine five and do question thirteen. All right, question thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. 13, 14, and 15. This is what we learned just now also. All those hutan lapo, hutan lapo and PHR. And then lastly, the last question, page 198, do question 20. Oh, sorry, 197, do question 19. Question 19. That's it. So this 197 question 19 is the susut nilai lah. Okay. So that's it. 
these five questions for your homework and I will see you in the next class. Then we finish off the Susuni line. All right, so see you guys. Take care and goodbye.